Hi, I'm Turner, and this is Indian Hen Outdoors. I've decided to uh, come inside today for the uh, the uh, show and tell and the history lesson. So what do we have here? We've already reviewed a couple shotguns right before dove season, and we're going to do a few more. Um, we've looked at the uh, new Browning A5. We've looked at the uh, Winchester SX4, if you haven't seen that already. And uh, coming up, we're going to look at the... Uh, Rite Masai Mara, that's coming up in a few weeks as well. What do we have here today? This is the Franke Affinity 3. If you're from the southeast, you probably heard people call these Frenchies or whatever. You know, nobody, it's pronounced Franke. Um, it, the original company was Luigi Franke from Italy. Uh, now, before we go outside and shoot this thing, and before I get into the gun, you know what time it is. It's time for the history lesson. Now, like all my videos, I am not selling uh, ammunition, firearms, or anything related. I'm not selling or promoting the sale of these items. This is a comprehensive review and a comparison and analysis. It's science. Now, Luigi Franchi was a family-owned company all the way up to 1987. And they were purchased by another Italian company that I cannot pronounce. So, so see me, so give me, so semi. Well, this parent company then went bankrupt in 1993, in which case, Franke was purchased by the Beretta Holding Company. So, a lot of people will say that this is made by Benelli or owned by Benelli or in that same umbrella, and it's half true. Benelli and Franke are both owned by the Beretta Holding Company. That is the parent company and they have all these subsidiaries. They have all these subsidiaries, uh, one of which owns Benelli and then uh, one of which owns Franke. Even though it actually says Benelli on the firearm, which is uber confusing. Now, Franke has an interesting history because although they're a bit um, lesser known uh, even today, they've had some really famous guns. Um, they've made some guns for the military. They've made some machine guns or whatnot. Probably the most famous, if you've ever played a Call of Duty game, is the Spaz-12 or the Spaz-15. These were made by Franke. Also, and we tested this probably two years ago now in our Vintage Shotgun Shootout Part 2, Franke made a version of the A5, the AL-48, um, that was based on that original loading system by John Browning. Now, something that Franke's are kind of known for is being really lightweight, and the Affinity 3 is no different. It probably comes in at around that six and a half pound mark, uh, which is fairly light for a semi-auto shotgun. Now, they've got a couple different versions of these. They've got a, the plain Jane synthetic black. Um, all of the Franke Affinities come with this oversized charging handle, which I like. This is the Affinity 3 Cerakote, I believe. Um, Barrel and receiver Cerakoted, comes in a couple different camo options, and you can get these in two and three quarter, three inch, or three and a half inch, which we have here today. Now, by my research and my eye, the only difference between this and the waterfowl version is that you get three extended waterfowl chokes and a uh, paracord strap with the waterfowl version. Now, as you can see, the owner of this firearm has put a, uh, a red dot on it because he's going to be using it to turkey hunt. That's why he's purchased the three and a half inch version. Now, the base model, synthetic, black stock, plain Jane, MSRPs for around 850 bucks. When you get into these Cerakoted versions with, that are three and a half inch, you can get on up into that $1,200, $1,300 range as seen here, which is a little higher. It's still cheaper than the Benelli, but you're creeping around that same area as the uh, the Masai Mar by Rite, and a little more expensive than the Winchester SX-4. Now, with these shotguns, um, good or bad, it kind of has this one-off recoil pad, which they claim reduces recoil by up to 50%. But because of this funky design, I really don't like when companies do that because you have to buy one specific to this gun. It really limits your aftermarket for putting, if you want to change the butt pad. Um, so I'm, I don't hate it, but I'm not necessarily a fan of that. Now, what I am a fan of is they did, unlike Winchester, they include some shims so you can change your, your drop. You can change the, the, uh, whether the stock goes a bit to the right or left. 
you can really adjust this and tweak it to your liking. It is an inertia driven shotgun. It is not gas operated. So well, it'll be interesting to see with this lightweight uh, what that recoil is like. Uh, inertia driven guns tend to kick a little more. That being said, the reason I like inertia driven shotguns is how easy they are to take down in the field and clean. So let's do that real quick in real time. Let's unscrew this. Similar to the Winchester. Now the barrel and forearm are gonna come off together, like so. I'm gonna set these down. All right, now the charging handle pops out, kind of give it a little wiggle, and you can see the little tapered edge, it just pops out. And the this metal piece and the bolt come out together. Now, it's just important to make sure that they go back together. There's a little slot here. As you can see um, but that's pretty much it other than taking the one piece trigger assembly out I'm just gonna take uh, let me see if I can get it. it's got one pin in it I'm just gonna take this ink pen and uh, give it a little push make sure I'm pushing from the right side give that a little push pull that out and Voila! You can clean this literally on the tailgate of your truck, which is very important for a waterfowl or a hunting shotgun. Um, if you spent any time in the woods, you have probably dropped your gun in a mud hole or dunked it or whatever. These things take a lot of abuse, so being able to take it down quickly and clean it, eh, that's a big plus. Now really quickly, with my crew drawing here, I want to talk about point of contact. So any of you that have ever tried to pattern your shotgun, you know that if wherever you're precisely aiming, let's say you have a dot or a little uh, true glow sight like these do, if you're aiming at a target, you know that the point of contact or the center of the pattern is not usually where you're aiming. Now, if you're putting that sight on, or that bead, on the center of the tin ring, the center of a bullseye at 35, 40 yards, what you'll find is, is that shotguns are usually a little lower or a little higher than where you're aiming. That, the center of that pattern, that is the point of contact. Now, the Franke, by all accounts, shoots a little low, which is similar to a lot of older shotguns. Most older shotguns their point of contact is going to be a little bit low. Most of the guns that I shoot are a little low. The Benelli's are kind of known for shooting a bit high. They're kind of the polar opposite. So, something to consider. The Franke, the star, is where you would be putting your sight, and my big dot is where the center of the pattern would be uh, on the Franke. And comparatively, uh, the Benelli, you'd be a little bit high. It really comes down to personal preference and trying out guns and see you're not precisely aiming with a shotgun. We are pointing and shooting. We're, we're instinctively shooting. So it really comes down to whatever is more comfortable for you. But I will say that most turkey hunters prefer a shotgun that shoots a bit low. Now, that's enough of me yammering. Let's go outside and shoot this. Two and three quarter. One ounce shot, one ounce eight shot, so a little on the light side. Now then, now right out of the gate, right out of the gate, this, this lightweight inertia shotgun, there's a, she kicks pretty good. To quote a slightly more famous uh, YouTube channel, she be kicking. You know what time it is. The dreaded Winchester Universal, the old white box. Nope, did not like that. Did not like that. Yay, yeah, it, it, it ejected that one. Rio, Texas Game Loads. 
1,340 feet per second. High brass dove loads. Let's see just how bad the recoil is. Oh my goodness. That's horrible. That is. That's that that load's a little more comparable to like a magnum load or a, a duck load. That's horrible. That is absolutely unpleasant to shoot. Well, thank you so much for watching today. Please do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. As for the Franke, I have no complaints with reliability or quality. Um between it and we're going to do a video in a couple of weeks on the Rite Masai Mara. Between the Masai Mara and the SX4, this is around, this is in the middle on price point. I think the Masai Mara is still a little higher. The Winchester is still cheaper. <sighs> to me, this is in third place. It's not a bad shotgun. Do not, do not hear me say otherwise. But for an inertia-driven shotgun for the price, the recoil is terrible. Um... The Moss Imar and the Winchester do not kick as bad as this. This is, um, recoil does not bother me generally. Um, I shoot a lot of old shotguns. I shoot a lot of magnum loads or high brass dove loads that are uh, high velocity, I should say. Um, but this, this is noticeable. The, the re I can just imagine a three and a half inch duck load or a three and a half inch turkey load in this would knock your teeth out. I don't know, at the end of the year, we'll rank all these guns. I'll do a little uh, top five or however many we test, and we'll see who the winner is. But uh, until next time, I'm Turner. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Indian Hen Outdoors. God bless.